shoot it. Is it working? Yep. All right. And I'll stop. All right. So we have like an hour and a half. So. Yo, what should I call this? Something like. How to get the Google job. This is what all computer science majors want. We all want a job at Google or another big company. Isn't it called the Fang or something? Fang? Yeah, Fang. Um, how to... What should it be? How, how to, to get girls. And be. That, that, nah. <laughs> nah. Um, how to ace programming interviews. Or no, I'm just gonna leave the Google. Nah. <laughs> Alright, I think that's it. You wanna start? Let's go. Start. Alright guys, what's up? We are in my uh, classroom slash university, and uh, yeah, it's been a while. I just said, hey guys, is that like, that's what everyone says. That's pretty sexist. What? what? So yeah, so uh, if you guys don't know, I am a uh, computer science student at the University of Maryland. I am in my second year. Um, so yeah, I'm a sophomore, and I study computer science. That is what I do. Yeah. All right, so what I've been doing for the past few months is... Um, I ba it's basically been interview season if you guys are like college students or if you're like like in the trying to get a job in like CS as a computer engineer or software engineer um, the interview season is like in in the fall um, that's for like the big companies like Google they do most of their recruitment and stuff and then you also can get a job in spring but it's a little harder like everyone finds their positions for summer internships so that's basically what I've been doing for the past two or three months um, it's a really long story but the first place that I interviewed at was um a huge campus sponsor, I'm not going to say who they are, but I remember I failed that interview. It was so bad. Uh, the behavioral went amazing. It was amazing, it was too behavioral. And then the third one was a technical and I absolutely just bombed it. They just looked at me. They were like, you're, 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 not, you're, you're not, you can't do it. Like you're, you're not gonna be able to do it. And then after that, that's when I just absolutely snapped. Um, if you guys are familiar with Leak Code, that site, I just absolutely snapped. I just did like 250 leak code problems. I read a book called Elements of Programming like seven times. We're going to talk about it over there. You know, show them what's in store. We got this. Yeah, we, we just got this today. Whiteboards with information we're about to talk about. Anyway, um, so yeah, so today we're going to talk about... What are you... So basically, I'm going to talk in this video about the ultimate guide to getting... Um, an internship or not even an internship like passing a technical technical interview I want to do other videos about like uh, the application process and all that craziness It really is like crazy But this video is going to be about the technical portion and passing that like I started just I couldn't even like traverse a tree I couldn't do the most basic things after passing my first year and that's like what they expect of you and I absolutely failed that interview I failed like three interviews before that big campus sponsor interview and I just decided, like, I can't do that. And, I, and then I just decided to go off and just study, self-study, and then get good. So this is going, this video is basically going to be what I found and what um, I think it takes to become, I don't want to say exceptional because I don't think I'm exceptional, but very, very solid. You'll go into an interview knowing that you're very ready and you're technically ready to pass whatever they give you. So, yeah, let's get into it. So... How to ace programming interviews. Um, so basically, in programming interviews for big companies and stuff, they are going to ask you data structure and algorithmic questions. Uh, questions that really test your thinking. And it's really like debatable. Like a lot of the questions, it's like they're not going to be that useful for like real life if, if you're like, you know, traversing a tree or stuff. You probably won't do that if you're just gonna be doing back end web development or something. You're gonna be dealing with abstractions that you don't need to worry about that. But maybe, maybe you might do that, but really, like, it's, it's all about like, getting your thinking process, and I don't know if there's a better way. I don't know if there's another answer, and that's kind of why this is what big companies do, algorithmic interviews. Um, and the goal, my goal is to get you guys offers. My goal is to teach you what you need to know so that you can walk into an interview confident that you can perform and do what you need. Like, some people really get into it, and. Um, love like solving problems and like um, just doing these like questions, finding the exact upper bounds for things. And like, like there's certain people that love that. There's certain people that don't. I'm on the kind of in like the middle. But like my goal is just the most utilitarian thing for people to get offers. This is why 
people study these questions so that they can work at companies that they love and dream to work at. So let's go into the mindsets um, that you should have going into this and kind of what I discovered along the process of like interviewing and stuff. So the key thing is that no one is naturally good and a lot of the times you might get jealous of other skill sets. There's some people who are just automatically very good at problem solving. Um, not even automatic, they just had a good fundamental maybe in high school and it just gave them a good basis for where they are now. That's me. <laughs> but um, really focus on like your skill sets and how you can improve and, and work on what you aren't good at and, and, and just focus on yourself. Like I, I, know, I know it's a thing to like compare, but that's just one thing to, to keep in mind. Also, luck is a huge part. With anything dealing with people and pipelines of talent and humans, there's always an, there's always an inaccuracy and there'll be a level of degree of error. There'll be very smart people that get rejected. There'll be some people that are, you know, okay that get accepted. It, it just, it just roll with the punches. It just, it's just something to deal with. So school, people say that you're going to learn like all the algorithms, all the stuff you need to know for to pass an interview in school. I think this is very true. You'll learn like 60, 70% of the data structures you need, but school will not prepare you for a common technical interview. It'll give you the fundamental basis you need with how to deal with the data structures in everyday case. But really what these questions do is they bend and twist your mind to see if you really know what you're talking about. And in that case, you really need to do these kinds of questions and change your thinking um, into this way. The only portal that an interviewer has into your mind, into your brain, is your words, your, your aura that you communicate to them as you interview. You can be the smartest person done 300 questions, 600 questions, if you don't go into the interview and sound like an intelligent, well thought out, well formed person, then all the person has is those 45 minutes to judge you. So it's key that you really practice and internalize the idea that your the interview is offering a portal to your interviewer to assess your technical skill set. And it's key that you optimize that time and keep that in mind. And then finally, the solution will happen. This is kind of a thing where you can do all, I think I did probably 600, 700 questions in the past two or three months. You can't know every question. Of all the interviews I did, the like six or seven or eight interviews that I did, I only probably saw one or two of those questions, not the data structures, but the questions themselves. So it's really important that you don't try to like memorize every question. You don't try to see if I, I, I just hope I'll get a question I know. Just know the fundamentals and then everything will follow. The solution will just happen. Talk, talk out the thought process and your interviewer will help you along. So those are kind of the mindsets to keep in mind. So next, moving to the fundamentals. So these are the things that your interview will be on. That in some, in some interviews you might be asked system design questions, you might be asked how does a RESTful server work, something like that. I mean that's possible, that's more of an experience thing. Most of the time it'll be like algorithmic questions for like the bigger companies like Facebook or um, a Google, right? So we have big O, time and space complexity. Um, we'll talk about big O notation. All of these are going to be topics I'm going to cover exhaustively, or I hope to cover at least. Um, time given. So primitives, things like bit shifting, that's probably rare. You won't see that unless you're like a senior going into a full-time position. Um, primitives, um, your arrays, strings, links, lists, stacks, queues, depth first search, breadth first search, trees, min and max heaps, just heaps in general, um, hash tables, searching, sorting, recursion and backtracking, this one's a little more difficult. It's something that's not, it wasn't covered in my like courses and I kind of had to teach myself how to do backtracking. Um, but recursion is a pretty common concept that most are familiar with. And then dynamic programming is just one of those things. I think you, if most people will know what I mean when uh, dynamic programming is like kind of tricky. Um, it's a thing where you just have to do a lot of problems and you slowly start understanding it. And then graphs and then greedy algorithms. So all of these are things I'll go into more depth later. So when you're solid with all of these things, all of these fundamentals, then you are ready. You can go into an interview and you can find your way through and make things work and allow the interviewer to get an accurate assessment of your intellectual ability, which is what this is all about. So I think the biggest advice I have going back is for freshmen and sophomores. Um, there's these uh, programs that the big companies offer 
um, like Google Engineer Practicum, Microsoft Explore, um, Facebook University, Twitter Academy, these like freshman sophomore programs that are kind of not full software engineering internships, but kind of like in the middle. And these are, I would, I'm not gonna say easy to get, but they're much easier to step into as long as you show all they're looking for is passion and you just need to be decently technically competent to get these internships. And then the crazy thing is if you're a sophomore, um, for most of these, you can just get a return offer. If you do well during the summer, you don't even have to go through all of this craziness and these two to three months of prep. You can just get a return offer. And it's literally like, I, I, I coined this with a friend, it's literally a cheat code. Getting a return offer after entering through one of these internships is just getting straight through to a full software engineering internship and you don't have to go through all this craziness. So this is just a side note, if you're a freshman and sophomore, this is definitely something you should keep in mind. And also go to the campus event. Instead of just going to the career fair where everyone lines up with their resume, you wanna to go to like the actual campus event so that you can talk to a recruiter in person because it's ultimately the people who know you that will get you through the door and say, vouch for you and say, this person is someone we want to interview. So moving on, this is what I call the holy grail. I need new names. Um, but yeah, this, this is basically the path that I followed to get to a very, very sound level of preparation for the technical interview process. First off, read Cracking the Coding Interview. This is a book everyone tells you to read and all the recruiters are like, read Cracking the Coding Interview in that introductory email you get. Um, do Code or Byte or whatever that site's called. Um, but yeah, Cracking Coding Interview, it's a great first step. It's a great step into learning about interviews. But I'd argue that I don't think Cracking the Coding Interview fully prepares you for a, a, a rigorous understanding of like the concepts um, that you would need for an interview. It's a very good start though. So after you do that, I'd say work on your weak spots. After I read Cracking the Coding Interview, I found my biggest problems were linked lists, trees, recursion, and dynamic programming. These were the four biggest things that just tripped me up always. I just didn't know how to handle these questions. Recursion, I just did not understand it. And then after that, what I did was, I pulled up each of those in leak code, and I started doing the easies. I could not do the easies. For a month, I could not do them. And then after a while, you start understanding that, you start getting good at them, and then you start doing the mediums, and then the mediums become easy after two or three weeks of just, just pain. It doesn't seem like you're going to advance, but eventually you start seeing the patterns and start understanding how these data structures work and how different problems can be solved with certain patterns you see. So what I recommend is 100 to 150 leak code mediums. I know this is extreme, it's just something you like have to do to get, get the memory in your fingers. So I did about like 250 leak codes um, and I did I think every medium in every single leak code section except for the big ones like arrays and dynamic programming. I only did a few of those. So finally, I think this is probably the number one um, Thing I would do. If you don't do any of these, I would say that you should definitely read a book called Elements of Programming Interviews, EPI. Yeah, I literally read Elements of Programming probably seven times in the past two or three months. It's a little long after the first one or two times, but eventually you just know all the questions um, and all of the ways they're done, and then you can just skim it and read over it. This is an amazing book. It really teaches you um, the fundamentals and gets your mind to like really grasp the idea. Why do certain complexities pan out the certain way they do? Why can this problem be approached this certain way? I think EPI is a much better than cracking and coding interview, but it's like an intermediate level. It's not something you can just step into if, if you're like getting just getting into it. And then I really recommend a website called Pramp.com. It's where you can do live interviews with other software engineers looking to interview. And I would say do like two to 10 of them. I did eight um, before my first interview. And I think it's an amazing site. Pramp.com is an awesome site, um, highly recommend. So this covers the skills you need, steps one through four, and then execution. So you can have all the skills that you need, but if you, if you can't execute, if you can't show that window to the interviewer in the first 45 minutes you're interviewing, then it's all for nothing. So I'll do other videos about actually getting the interview and like the process, writing essays, um, making a good resume, I'll, I'll get into that as well. So basically, find, like my goal is to equip you with the tools 
to handle any interview question and pass. The, the key is not to memorize all the questions. The key is not to become a genius and just know every single concept out there. The key is to have a solid fundamental grasp of these concepts as a thinking like a computer scientist and approaching these problems in a way that puts efficiency first and always trying to find the best solution. That's the key. So um, finally, other channels I recommend is Tushar Roy. I watch every single one of his videos to the end. Um, and then Hacker Inc. Um, not like the Hacker Inc. general videos, but like the Hacker Inc. coding problems. I forgot his name. Craig and Coding interview author. Kyle. No, it's, uh, oh, Gail Lock McDowell. Yeah. Yes. Um, so they, they go over every single one of the data structures very well. Um, and I think that's also another great resource. So those two are great resources as well. So yes, so that's everything. That is the path. Um, these are the fundamentals that we're going to go over in probably the next few months. And yeah, I guess that's all. Um, I don't know how often we'll do videos. I said I'd do the object-oriented thing, and I never ended up doing it um, because I don't know, I just got really busy. I hope this doesn't happen with this, but I hope like this video and all the stuff I said helps. All right, so, so, yeah. Um, if these are the kind of like videos you wanna see, um, definitely tell me in the comments below. I, like, this was a huge problem for me. I just didn't think there were enough resources um, to teach, teach this kind of stuff well, especially for the college student. And um, yeah, I guess this is it. And we will be back. You actually have a nice handwriting. Are you still recording? Yeah.